The future of mankind is being guided behind closed doors. And all over the world, scientists are working on projects designed to take man beyond the confines of this earth. You are looking at the actual models of spacecraft now being developed by agencies of the United States government. This is an Apollo spacecraft designed for elliptical orbit of the moon. Its lunar landing vehicle can transport three men safely to and from the moon's surface. These are other types of manned and remote control mechanisms, each designed for a specific function, many already in operation as satellites of this Earth, some in readiness for the moonshot, others designed for space, a few to serve as space stations, and the most complex of all, prototypes of craft capable of putting a man on the surface of another planet. Wheel was one of man's first inventions and has been with him all of his civilized life. But now it, like so many other of his creations, must be modified to fit his new demands. These are three types of variable radius wheels designed to transport a vehicle over a rockiness. New concepts are being created almost daily. Some will never get beyond the drawing board, but others, or their descendants, will become part of man's greatest adventure, the exploration and colonization of space. All over the world, men and women are working to make that dream a reality. Every aspect of the journey is being analyzed from the tiniest control devices to the mightiest rocket engines. But it's not enough to just get there. Just as the great explorers sailed from Spain and England and France to discover the Americas so that the colonizers might come later, so will our exploration spacecraft precede the colonizers of the planets. Already plans are being made for the colonies. Sources of food and power must be found. Artificial atmosphere is created. Everything done to build an Earth away from the Earth. No man living today can predict exactly what the future holds. But this much we do know. All through man's march across this earth, the wildest dreams and fantasies of one age have become the commonplaces of the next. The motion picture you are about to see can be called today a fantasy of the future. But one day, maybe not too far distant, audiences will be able to look back on it in the same spirit with which we view pictures about the first covered wagons crossing the plains.
But I know she exists. I know she does. I know it. All the time we were there, I heard her. Her and that sweet, haunting sound she makes, like the sirens that tempted Ulysses. And I think I'm crazy back here on Earth. Crazy, still intoxicated by the atmosphere back there. But wait a minute, I'm getting ahead of myself. Let me tell you the whole story. All of it. From the beginning. And see what you think. You be the judge. It was two years ago, in 1998, that the first manned spaceship left Earth for the planet Venus. This attempt ended in tragedy. A meteor hit the ship. Everybody. Everything was lost. Everything but the will to get there, to explore Venus. And so, it was only six months later that the second attempt was made. Astronaut Howard Sherman and Captain the Alfred Kearns. The extra but there was another being with them. Kearns' invention, Robot John. Awaken, John. Awaken. Glow, John. Monitor, John. I hear you. Everything went smoothly the first part of the voyage. They traveled over halfway, 17 million miles, without mishap. Radio contact was maintained with Marsha at Earth Control, and they stopped on schedule at the United States Space Station, Texas, for refueling. Attention, all landing personnel, report on flight deck. Stand by to receive flight number 87 from Earth.
Earth Control, we listen to their progress with more concern than anyone else. Refueling, A-OK, -okay. over and out. More because we were the command crew, and if anything went wrong, we were set to follow. There were three of us. Commander William Billy Lockhart, astronaut Hans Walters, and me, Andre Freneau. I remember how worried we were as we listened to their voices from so many miles away. Kern's calling Marsha. Kern's calling Marsha. Refueling completed. Ready for blast off. And they prepared to land. A planet of fire below us. Is it a new world or will it consume us all? At any moment now. started going wrong. Black clouds. Light. I don't like the looks of this. I'm turning control over to Robot John. Ahead, Steve Mountain. I am going up. Wow, close call. We're watching on the location finder. The area is strange. This is truly a prehistoric planet. Landing location is square 73. We're now dropping our beacon. Landing 300 meters southwest of square 73. Uh-oh, there's water beneath us. We're drifting. Charmin. Kern. Answer. Kern. Charmin. Kern, are you there? It's hopeless. Well, very soon after that, it became clear there was only one thing to do. Blast off for Venus ourselves. Complete the mission. Explore.
explore the planet and attempt to rescue Kearns and Sherman. If they were still alive. Keep coming. More, John. That's it. Cover me, Kern. Look out. There comes another one. I got him. He's coming behind you. Secure yourself to that boulder, John. Proceed. Proceed. equipped to fight this place than we are. I'm wondering if we should be here at all. Why don't you catch a bus and go home? Don't think I wouldn't if I could find one. There he is. He's up. Pull it tight. He can hold it. You better go first, and I'll come along after you. Within two hours, we were ready to go. Refueling was accomplished in record time. There was no time to lose. Considering the way things turned out, what I was thinking about as we sped through the dark universe on our way to an unexplored planet. I was wondering if maybe there wasn't some reason that Venus had been named after the goddess of love. If maybe there wasn't some wise old astronomer way back in the dawn of time who knew something. Something he kept to himself. But before I could come to any conclusions about it, we were preparing for our touchdown on Venus, where maybe I'd find all the answers. And then, almost before I knew it, we were there, we were landing.
Don't begin celebrating yet. Ha. Uh -huh. Oh. Is our level okay? Yep, there it is. On the button. Boy, it sure feels strange to have weight. Yes, it does seem strange. That's sure. But it's nice and solid. Well, I don't know about you fellas, but I'd like to see Venus. Open number three and hit the beam. Paper, try the port viewer. Telescreen gets it okay. We'll pan port. Formations of weird rock. Something's there. I'll switch on the outside sound pickup. First time I heard her. A human being? Hold it. It's finished. Transfer it to playback. Meanwhile, you might check upon the atmosphere, Hans. It better be good. Then you better get your spacesuit. We'll move out. Andre, I want you to attempt a contact with Sherman by radio. If you raise them, tell them to report their position. Then get yourself into a spacesuit. We're going to walk about. I'll be right behind you. That'll be handy if I slip. Get popping now. It's 4.7 on oxygen. That's pretty close. Marsha has radar movement. Sherman? She can't be sure, but it looks like two objects. One metallic and moving in the area we expected to search. Probably Kern and Sherman. Come on, Andre. Hurry. 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 Hurry.
take one of those things home for the zoo. You've got to be more careful, Andre. If we hadn't heard you call me... I didn't call. You called out to us. We heard you. But I didn't call you. It sounded like Lockhart. Let's be getting back. All we knew was that Marcia at Earth Control had spotted what was probably oh, Kearns and Sherman and approximately where they might be. So we started out in our space car, heading in that general direction. Not stopping to investigate the many prehistoric sites we passed. But we were still unable, no matter how hard we tried, to make radio contact with Kearns or Sherman. So we had no way of knowing what they were going through on that distant part of the planet. Very little oxygen left us. Hope they're on the way. Looking for us. Through this heat. They may not be able to make it through to us. You better hope they'll get through it and spot us. I'm beginning to feel like my head's swimming. Of course. It's your torn suit. Infection is getting through. Maybe we ought to take some quinsel and... No. We'd have to rest after. Must... keep... moving. Must. 
must continue to work the laws of mathematics. There's always a precise probability. Mathematics might prove. Mathematics might... Uh. Marcia. Marcia. Here is... Here is Marcia. You... You must help us. It's... It's closing in. I await your order. I await your order. Help them find us, John. The shoreline's the best. If we do, my friend, we'll never make it to him. Fat chance there is of finding him. That voice again. Hold up. Sounds like a girl. A girl? Perhaps. Or a monster. Sure, no humans here. Well, we're humans. Well, no one else has made it. You better believe it. But it sounds so human. Subhuman, you mean, like that 40 armed plant that just grabbed you. I still say it's a girl. A girl. With blue scale. Could be. He's on to something. It's possible that before us, other men got here. Especially in this age. You ought to know that, Hans. To a man of science, anything is possible until proven otherwise.
I can't imagine any people in their right mind exploring planet Venus. Come on, Hans. We're here, and we're in our right minds, aren't we? Uh, let's go. I am. I'm getting... Whoa. Must be Martian. Static. Really awful. Hear it? Point to point on the dial. We'll find it. I'll try it. Hello. John, hello. John, listen. This is a command ship. Are you there? Come in. Up one more point. Come in. Better go to solar battery. Much bigger reach. I'm on it now. Hello. 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 You must hear me, John. Please open your mic and answer me. You must obey me, John. No response. Try another point. One, two, five. You have to readjust your frequency for transmitting, if you hear me. I hear you. I have adjusted. Can you report your position and plot number? Over. Square 40 in shelter. Tell me what's outside. Water, rock above, falling on large rock. That's square 40. Not far. Ask him about the men. Hello. We would like to know about Kern and also about Sherman. They do not speak. They do not move. How much time before we get there? Who knows? Commander, maybe the robot can help. Try. Keep an eye on the compass. Grab onto them. Hello. You will listen, John. First, you will obey me and do precisely what I say. You will listen. Listen, John. Obey my every command. Remove container two from Kern's first aid kit. Repeat. Container two. Do this quickly. Revive him with water. Pour it over his face. Quickly. Then close his helmet. At least we know they're alive. Let's hope they stay that way. Commander, look there. I'm ready with the astro gun. Some kind of flying reptile. He may not see us. 
He hit him. He's turning around. Maybe not. We're in for it now. He knows we're here. Luck. Take it now. Here he comes. Don't miss him. Here he comes again. Open hull. We'll submerge. We were forced to submerge, even though we had killed the flying reptile, because of the damage the creature had caused when it hit us. And it was a good thing, too. For here, under the sea, we were to find the second clue to life on Venus. Let's put it down for a minute and take a rest. It's not far to the beach, if our calculations are correct. I hope this will run again. Don't worry, it will. Look, the cliffs are all in even rows. Like streets. I'll look around, just five minutes. Might find something interesting. What do you know? It's... It, it's a statue. Andre! What's up? You just look here. That's only a petrified tree. Only? Why, it's a bronze statue. And much more, Hans. Rubies. You say rubies? Show me. Simple. The eye of an idol. An idol? Yes, a reptile. A reptile resembling that flying monster that attacked us earlier. Up there. You're right, Andre. I'm not laughing anymore. There was a civilization here. And I'll bet you there still is.
where to you, Odera. You will be avenged. The evil demons that did this will themselves be destroyed. Something seemed to draw me away, to make me search for I didn't know what. I felt something. I don't know. I felt as though I were being watched. But I didn't see anything except a harmless octopus. Yet, still feeling a strange presence, I went on. Then, as quickly as it came, that weird sensation vanished, and then there was nothing. Nothing but the sea. So I followed my original impulse, looking for a clue like the statue of the flying reptile. And I found nothing except a rock that I liked for its shape and that could serve as a specimen for the geologists. much longer. You're, you're not alone. Here we are, Skipper. Good. We'll need more fire. Everything in the car is soaking wet. Ah, feels good to sit. How are the batteries, Hans? They stay dry. The atom plant? Still hot. You've got that worried look again, Hans. You're right. I've pulled and checked every wire and part in that darn radio. It won't operate. I've tried everything I know. I tell you, it's simply hopeless. How about a long string in an oatmeal box? <laughs> oh, Neil Fox. The radio will dry out. We know it's not a dead planet. Not completely. Our proof is the statue. And Ruby. And the woman. She's probably somewhere. For his sake. But the main thing is, there could be a whole race of people out there watching us, hiding, afraid that we'll observe them. And bite them? 
we came from above, drop, to them we're probably some kind of monster. What if they're human shape? They very well could look like them. But mind you, I'm only advancing a little hypothetical science fiction. Because nothing should be overlooked. Let's face it. They built a city that's now under the sea. Hans, it must be true. Many made it to shore from the sea. Then why didn't they build themselves another? We may find they did. When we explore the planet. Before we leave, I'll meet her. Beautiful song and a beautiful girl. She must have heard you. Where is it? Everywhere. I suppose it could be an omen. Or maybe she's helping us. If I could just see what she looks like. sensation. I didn't know what it meant. And I kept staring at that rock I'd found, as though perhaps it might hold an answer. Andre! Andre! Thanks for waiting. <laughs> she take care of you. Stop teasing him, Hans. He's in love. suddenly dark. Well, it's no wonder. What makes you say that? There's an ash cloud above us. An ash cloud? A volcano? Yes. It's spectacular. And beyond the volcano, it looks like the lights of a city. The red spot Andre saw. 
We well, must get a move on. Not right away. This might be our only chance to gather some samples. Lava and ash. To take away with us. All right. We'll go to a much better vantage point than right now. Sherman, come. But look at the magnificence. No one on Earth has seen such a sight.
Let me help you out, my friend. I never thought I'd see your ugly face again. <laughs> we shave him, and he insults us. <laughs> so, we should have saved Kurt's robot instead. <laughs> Turn, you rascal. Knew you'd make it. Is the robot finished? Yes. of the situation, and though we tried to keep our spirits up, it was still pretty discouraging. Any the volcano had destroyed some of our provisions, and our rocket ship's fuel supply was low anyway, considering the added weight of Kearns and Sherman. It looked like we'd have to be starting back very soon. What else is there to do? Well, <laughs> we can look for Andre's girl. Very cute, Hunt. You name them after us? Hmm? Well, with triplets, it's better with numbers. Looks to me like he's raising his own countdown. Why not names? I'd forget. I'm worried about him. <laughs> so you really found proof there were people on this planet. Hard to believe. Believe it or not, my dear Mr. Kern, it's true. And they could still be here. I don't go along with that. Could a human survive in a place like this? You survive. And man will almost always adapt himself in time. And don't forget in the dim past we all lived in water. For centuries our Earth was toxic. But that atmosphere evolved mankind's form, adjusting the Earth. And I'd bet that these people on our planet couldn't live. The air'd be poisoned. I'm afraid I don't share your opinion. You just can't close your mind to it. We found proof. Proof of intelligent being. And those lizard men of Kearns. That's proof. Look, suppose they do look like lizards. Couldn't they be people? Hmm? Suppose they saw the ship. Got frightened, then donned their lizard costumes, eh? then jumped up and down to spook us away. <laughs> what possible story could explain it better, huh? <laughs> no, you're the winner. Joking aside, my friend, man, lizard, or what, I know there were or are intelligent people here. If we just had time, I think they might come to us. Look, even you, Kern, said you thought you saw the lights of a city beyond the volcano. I said they looked like, not were. Here, you two. Have some coffee and rest your voice. If only there was some way to communicate with them, some way to make them understand we were not an enemy, that we wanted nothing except to know their ways, study their civilization. Or was it really all just fancy? Just my wishful imagination? And that sound only an accident? 
caused by the wind in the canyon. we can be proud of. Look at all the samples we got. There's going to be a large headline when they see all these great things we're bringing back to them. This one's loaded, old man. Steady, child. Bring the spectra. than any rain we'd ever seen. But it continued without let-up. In fact, it seemed to increase in strength. As we planned our takeoff procedure, which required some adjustment because of Kearns and Sherman, I know we all felt slightly uneasy, nervous, as we listened to the heavy rainfall on the ship. For myself, I, I listened with a sinking feeling as though every drop were taking me further and further from ever finding her. Then suddenly... Oh, 
quickly. Andre. Hans. They are stronger than our gods. They are stronger than Terra. Terra is a false god.
strongest God of all. We worship you. I'll die trying. 